worn by Lori and Gun Gun Gur 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 Grover. The next book on my Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my worst books of 2020. I'm not even going to give a disclaimer because it is what it is. These were the books that I thought were the worst that I read in 2020. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I have on this list is Finding Cinderella by Colleen Hoover. This is Hopeless 2.5, so I don't know if it's like counts as a novella or if it's like part of the series. I'm assuming it's a novella, but I absolutely hated this book. I gave it a one out of five stars. I absolutely loved Hopeless when I read it, like back when I first started my channel in like 2015 or something like that. But um, yeah, this was not good. It basically follows Daniel, who is Holder, the main boy character from Hopeless, his best friend. One day in fifth period, he is in inside of a maintenance closet at school and he meets a mysterious girl. They end up having sex and then he never sees that girl again. He never discovers her true identity but then a year later he is still thinking about his Cinderella. Then he meets a girl named Six and his whole world changes and it's like the story of that. Both of the main characters in this really bothered me. The way that Daniel reacts to like the big twist that partakes in this book really bothered me. The book is very like slut shaming and just not very sex positive at all. I just don't think that it's something that teenagers should be reading. I also am not a fan of insta-love and this was like insane insta-love. Like they literally met each other and then five hours later they're telling each other that they love each other and it's just, I did not like it. Worst book probably of 2020 for sure. The next one I actually still have my physical copy of because the thrift stores are all closed right now due to COVID. So it is the Reformed Vampire Support Group by Katherine Jinx. This was terrible. It's basically like a romanticization of vampires in the sense that it's not romanticized at all and they're actually all very unlikable and they all suck. I could not stand any of the characters in this. It basically follows a bunch of vampires in Australia who create a support group with each other in order to not bite and infect other humans. It just uses a lot of derogatory terms for for, like gay people as well as the R word and I am just not here for that in 2020. Granted this was written like a really long time ago. This apparently was written in 2009 so by 2009 you should not be using those terms anymore in my opinion. Maybe I'm just like progressive which I'm definitely not like this is common sense but not a fan, did not like it. Next is Fortune, Fire, and Stars by Andrea Robertson, and I was really excited for this because it said it was for fans of The Ember and the Ashes. It was not even remotely anything like The Ember and the Ashes. It was advertised as being very fast-paced and, like, exciting, and it was anything but that. The pacing was so ridiculously slow, nothing happened for the entire book, mostly. The only character that I was actually invested in in this book was a fox, so it didn't even talk. So take that as you will. The concept of the book was really interesting, but even with that, like I said, nothing happened. So it didn't really live up to my expectations of it. And it was just boring, so. The next is The Need by Helen Phillips, and this book, I do not know if I am just not smart enough to understand all the symbolism and whatnot in it, but it follows like this mother who has these two children and then her house gets breaking into one night and there's an intruder. I don't want to give away who the intruder is, but it just was really stupid and I did not enjoy it at all. I just had no idea what was going on for the entire book and again I don't know if that is because I am not smart enough for this book or if it really just didn't make any sense. Read it yourself and let me know because I am still so confused with this book. The next book I have is A Wicked Magic by Sasha Lauren. I was really excited for this book because it is all about witches. I also just really liked the cover because it's purple and it has a cat on it so I was really intrigued with this story. I liked the book initially when I started reading it until about halfway when it became very repetitive. There's also a lot of trigger warnings that were not given for this book that I definitely would have liked going into because it was a lot to deal with when I thought it was just like a lighthearted book about witches. And then the ending of the book was just very anticlimactic based off of the lead up and the tension that was built during it. Basically the characters just kind of stumbled on how to defeat the bad guy who wasn't really all that bad anyways and there was no like definitive plan and like it was basically they defeated him by accident. There was also just a huge toxic friendship in this book. Like I just wanted to keep them away from each other at all times and I don't think that it's healthy for teenagers to read about this toxic friendship because it's never really discussed as being toxic. It's just kind of like 
they're going in a circle around each other. Next on my list is Kind of a Big Deal by Susan Hale. This book was so bad. It follows this girl who moves to New York to try to become a Broadway star. She ends up not making it, so now she's a nanny to a six-year-old. She stumbles across a bookstore where she is able to read a book and be inserted as the main character in the story, and it's like the story of that. So, I initially thought that that was a really cool concept because like, hello, who would not want to go and be the main character in books? I would. But the writing style in this was just not good. <laughs> It was very repetitive and stilted. I hated the main character. She was so full of herself and like entitled and I just could not vibe with her. She also is like obsessed with her high school boyfriend which she hasn't actually talked to in two months but she's so obsessed with him that she takes his last name as her stage name which is just weird to me. She keeps going on and on about how much she loves him and blah 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 but then she meets a new boy and then five minutes later she's like basically proclaiming her love to this new boy but it's like you were just saying how much you liked your boyfriend and it was just not good. I just did not vibe with this book at all. Like the only reason I actually finished this book was because it was so incredibly short but it honestly just felt like a chore so... Next up is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. This one I am so mad about because Marissa Meyer is one of my favorite authors of all time and this is her like first crack at contemporary romance and I absolutely did not like it. I thought that the main character was just annoying and whiny and so full of herself, <laughs> very much like the other character in A Kind of a Big Deal. She just pissed me off so it was very hard to enjoy any other aspect of the book because any scene with her in it just made me want to rip the book in half. The next book I have is Under Shifting Stars by Alexandra Latos. This is again one that I still have the physical copy of, although it will be going to the thrift store, but I really did not like this book. It follows these like two twins who go to different schools. One is neurodivergent and she's having a very hard time fitting in with her peers. And then the other one is like trying to discover who they are and they're starting to have feelings for a non-binary person in their class. And it also covers like grief and things like that, which I do think was handled well, but I hated the treatment of the neurodivergent twin Aubrey in this. She's basically infantilized by her parents and everybody around her. Personally, after working with children or just people in general with special needs, you don't have to talk to them like they're five years old. You can treat them like adults because they are adults and they understand what's going on around them. So it just really bothered me to see the parents and everybody treat her like she was five years old when she's supposed to be, I think, like 15 or 16. So, was not a fan. The next book on my list is First Born by Lori Ann Grover. This book follows a society where females are not wanted, so at birth you give your child an amulet, which basically suppresses all female aspects of yourself. There's a girl named Tia Doan who, as she grows up, she starts having feelings for her childhood best friend and is her, like, dealing with that. I was not a fan of this book because just the pacing was really slow and I didn't care for any of the characters, which made it very hard to want to keep going because having a very slow pace while not caring about characters, just made for a very boring experience while reading. And the writing style was also just very choppy and I just didn't like it. So again, it was just very hard for me to read, so. And then the final book that is on my list is A Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This is by Kristen White. This is another one that had a very toxic relationship, which I apparently am just not a fan of. It's supposed to be a retelling of Frankenstein, which I haven't actually read the book, so I have no idea if that actually lived up to the comparisons and whatnot. But it was so slow and so boring and I didn't connect with any of the characters. So like Forged in Stars and Fire or whatever that book was called, I don't remember, and it talked about it like five minutes ago. It just made it very hard to want to keep reading because it was so slow and boring and I didn't connect to any of them so I just didn't care. The ending of the book was also just like super fast compared to the slow pacing at the beginning of the book and the middle of the book. So I just overall did not vibe with this book. I don't think that it was good and I'm pretty sure it has some pretty low ratings on Goodreads as well so I feel like I'm not out of the majority in this. So that's a first for my book reading habits but yeah not a fan. All right, everybody, so those were my worst books of 2020. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and if you disagree with me or if you agree with me, or let me know what some of your worst books of 2020, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!